talk a little about corn seed traits. There are a lot of them out there. They're pretty confusing. And when you start hearing things like smart stacks and optimum acre max, what does all that stuff mean? I don't know. I think the marketing people have done a good job thoroughly <laughs> confusing everyone because uh, yep. no matter which company you listen to, they say they've got the most simple plan possible for your refuge acres to make life easy for you. And when you ask a farmer, okay, explain the plan to me, they have no idea. And here's the worst part of it all. In most cases, because of what the farmers do and what they get talked into, they end up losing yield because they don't have 100% of their acres protected. And that's the most important thing. We want to make sure that if you're going out there in, let's say, a corn on corn situation, you've got rootworm protection on 100% of your acres because you need it. Or if you're in a corn bore area of the country, which is a lot of the country, you've got protection on 100% of the acres. That's what you need. So let's talk through how we're going to get there. Well, just a second here. I think it's kind of interesting because right now the new insect traits that are coming out are all talking about western bean cutworm and those kind of yep. insects. And it's, you know, for the most part, they're big bugs too, but they're a distant second to what corn borer used to do to our crops and what corn rootworm yeah, is currently on, doing to the crops. It depends on the area of the country. If you're in Nebraska and Iowa right now, western bean cutworm is one of the major pests and it might even in some years be worse than corn borer. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is you can't forget about how bad a problem corn borer was and yeah. how bad a problem rootworm is just to think, oh, I've got a trait, it's all done, I don't have to think about it anymore. Well, corn borer all of a sudden is being left out of the equation in some of these things. Okay, before we get to that though, let's start first with this concept of refuge. Basically, if you have a corn borer trait or a rootworm trait that you don't plant 100% of your acres to it, you plant 80% to the corn borer trait or the rootworm trait, and you have 20% that does not have the trait in it. Now that 20% can be treated with insecticide and that's what we would encourage you to do if you've got an insect problem, but it's gotta go without the trait. So that's been what's happened in the past. Well, well, and I like that system because you know where you're at. You know 80% is good, you know the other 20%, you gotta do something That's about right, it. and then you can treat those acres. They have to be kept separate. What we do on our farm is we put those acres around the borders of our fields, then it's real easy to run full rate insecticide there, and then we also go and spray post-emerge insecticide for corn borer. No problem, we know where the acres are. They're easy to get to, simple, easy, done. Okay, right, now, right, let's smart talk about stacks. Well, we, you gotta go, last year, smart stacks came out, and what smart stacks did is put two different corn borer traits together with two different rootworm traits and then they got the refuge down to five percent so now you don't have to have eight or twenty percent refuge you can get by with five percent and so some of these nice. things vary depending on what part of the country you're in but in the upper midwest yep. where we are it's a five percent refuge and you say Okay, so what does that mean? So you can plant 95 bags of smart stacks corn, you're protected from rootworm and corn borer, and then you've got the other five bags that you plant that's a refuge corn. It's a straight right. roundup, or it's a conventional, whatever you wanna do, and you know where you're at. You know what it's got, and you know if you keep those acres separate rather than mixing them all together, you say, okay, I need to spray for corn borers on those acres, great, do it. Okay, so the next thing that's going to be coming in the next year or two is you're going to see smart stacks with what's called refuge in the bag, where basically they put 5% without traits in that bag. And here's the reason why I don't like that. Now I don't know where my refuge is at, and I'm going to have a bunch of plants out there that are susceptible to corn borer, they're susceptible to rootworm, and the only way I can protect them is to put insecticide over the whole field. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't want that on my farm, but that's what a lot of the companies are going to. So Pioneer saw this they don't have smart stacks Dow and Monsanto do since they don't have smart stacks they decided ooh we better do something so they came out with optimum acre max well it's 90 percent with a rootworm trait and 10 percent without in the optimum acre max but one. it's all got corn borer okay so you've still got to have your 20 percent refuge for the corn borer somewhere so, and why, in some so areas, why is that different why because is that it, simple to me because in some areas you're allowed to have that a half a mile away with the rootworm trait right now, in most cases, you've gotta have the refuge right in that same field. And for some people, that's an inconvenience. They wanna have all one thing in this field and all one thing in the next field. So by doing this, they say, well, you're gonna get rootworm on 90% of those seeds and the 10% of the seeds that don't have the trait, we're gonna put extra seed treatment on there. You oh, got the Poncho oh, 1250. Oh, hold on, hold on. Well, yep. this, see, to me, this is something I don't like. When we get that humidity in the spring, 
with that 1250 yes, product. We weren't dropping as many seeds. Here's the reason why it won't be as much of a problem because it's only on 10% of the seeds. It's not on every one of the seeds, but I agree with you, that's a concern for me. So the well, other I, concern for me- I understand why they did it because you have something yeah. at least on those seeds right. that are mixed in. But the other concern for me is I've got 10% where I'm maybe going to get 50% control at the very most with a Poncho 1250. We don't like Poncho 1250. We'd much rather have those well, acres it's, it's separate and nothing. use a good rootworm it's, product. It's better than nothing. Right. But it's not better than the other treatments that are available on the market. And right. Nothing against Poncho. Poncho is a great product. It's just the seed treatment does not deliver enough insecticide to keep all the rootworms away. Right, for that particular pest. Great on a bunch of other things, but for that particular pest, you know, it's marginal. So we go back to rule number one with anything that you're going to buy for your farm, know what you're getting. Understand <laughs> yeah. the program because while companies are trying, whether it's Mycogen or Monsanto or Pioneer, they're trying to make refuge simple for you. If you don't understand it completely, something's going to get left out of the system. You want to be able to comply with whatever the rules and regulations are. Most farmers that, that I know want to do things right. We just have to understand what right is. Well, another thing you need to understand is how to control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 